Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Tokyo Tropic Turtles Draft to Glory franchise mode here in MLB The Show 24. So in last episode we had the year 3 draft and it was kind of a mixed bag of a draft but we did manage to get some more solid prospects in for our team which I'll show you here right now as you can see our first pick was none other than David Sasaki who's a 61 overall at 18 so pretty solid starting overall but unfortunately only a C potential he's just barely outside of the B potential range so hopefully he develops well enough to obviously get into that B potential range maybe even an A potential at some point we also drafted Eric Yamamoto who I'm excited for as a reliever because I think he could be kind of like Tom Koo is and Tom Koo is pretty damn good already at this point but there is Yamamoto we also drafted Mark Taguchi, solid shortstop prospect, so three solid picks in a row, I would say. And then we made a bit of a bad choice here with Walter Choi. Now, maybe he could outgrow his potential, but I don't know if it's going to be something that's easily done for him because he doesn't really have the best contact numbers and stuff like that. So it's not like we could just turn him into a good contact hitting guy and then maybe his potential goes up because he plays well. Uh, but yeah, he's got deep potential. He's a 51 and 18, which isn't bad, but still being a deep potential obviously is not what we really want. Uh, we didn't draft William Chung, who's also a very solid prospect, the best probably potential guy out of this uh, draft class for us. And uh, we were looking at him last year and potentially picking him in year two, but we didn't end up because he ended up disappearing. Well, he re-entered this draft, and he's a pretty low overall for a 19-year-old at 46, but at least he has a high ceiling, and we have a long time to develop him into being that future outfielder for us. Uh, we also did draft Theodore Lee, but unfortunately he did not sign with us, so we won't know how good he is until next year's draft if he re-enters the draft class again, which kind of sucks because we could always use more prospects at first base and all that type of thing. And then we also drafted Kevin Sato, who definitely was our worst pick of the bunch, I would say, in a way. The interesting thing about him, though, having C potential in 59 at 23, is he has actually really good contact, vision, and discipline. So I think this guy might be able to outgrow his C potential in a sense, but also him being already 23 as well, that might uh, make it a little bit tough for, for obviously for him to become something usable at the MLB level. But he could still be a decent like stopgap in our lineup as we wait for more prospects to get ready. So it was an okay draft for us. And according to the rest of the league, I don't think it was that insane of a draft class. So obviously I hope that uh, future draft classes are a little bit better than this, but at least we added some more bodies to our future prospect pools. So there is that. But anyways, let's get into your guys' comments now, and then we'll get simulating for the rest of the season. We'll get through the entire offseason again and get ready almost for another draft uh, in the coming episodes. So the only two comments are from Nick Bucker, Baron Zosi. The first one says, Tom Lee is an easy pick for an Aussie Cardenas award, and I totally agree. Uh, down in AA right now, uh, Tom Lee has been absolutely really great. He's batting a 301 on this team. He's up to a 65 overall at 18. And even though he has D potential, he's definitely going to get a huge boost. And hopefully we can get him to like a B potential player at some point. But likely he will be into the C potential range soon, I think, if I'm not mistaken, which is great. Uh, so obviously he's going to get a huge potential boost. And hopefully that power doesn't drop off more because his power game is really good at the moment. So yeah, very excited to see what Tom Lee ends up being like for the MLB team at some point in time. And Nick also says maybe Sato would be a better outfielder and the guy we picked round one would be a better first baseman, to be honest. So he's thinking that uh, Sasaki would be probably a better first base option, which is interesting. I don't think I'm going to change players' positions, uh, but Sasaki could only play in the outfield, it looks like. If we look at his fielding, his fielding's decent enough for a first baseman. Um, his arm still needs work and whatnot. Eh, I don't know, maybe he could be a first baseman. Uh, but Sato, as an outfielder, he was saying... And maybe, eh, I don't know. It depends, I guess. We could think about how we develop some of these guys a bit. But obviously, we'll make that decision when we go into next season on what to train all these guys in and what areas. And obviously, turn them into certain players. Like, obviously, if a player has a really good contact hitting or, let's see, who has a really good contact hitting? Um, obviously, somebody like Sasaki, turning him into a power hitting guy, I think is something I have on my bingo card. So getting that vision and discipline up there just because his power is already really good. Sato has good contact in vision and discipline, so maybe just continuing to develop him as a good contact hitter would be uh, probably the best play for him. Uh, but a couple of these other guys, it's kind of tough on because they're a little bit more balanced approach. So he could kind of just like look for the highest stats. So I guess his contact versus lefties is pretty good. So maybe making him into a good outfielder with some good contact 
I don't really know exactly, but we'll decide on that obviously when it comes to that point. But anyways, let's uh, get into simulating the rest of year three. We are going to change this over to just the double-A calendar because obviously we want to see how good our players finish up off the double-A season because obviously Parker Iwamura has been fantastic down there. A lot of the pitchers have been really good, so I'm excited to see what they could do for the rest of the season. So we'll follow a double-A till the end of their season, and then we'll go obviously to the majors once that's done. But I do want to see where our guys finish up in terms of points, uh, like not points necessarily, home runs and all that stuff. Because obviously there's a lot of good talent down there. Some of those guys are going to get promoted to AAA next season. So should be exciting to see what they do the rest of the ways. So let's go to, I guess, the 24 for fun and see how we do over the stretch. And hopefully our AA team does pretty well the rest of the way. They have been doing better this year for sure than last year. They're actually got 12 wins on the season, which is kind of surprised considering it's only taken a few years for them to actually be a relatively okay team. Not as good, obviously, as some teams, but still enough to kind of build up those prospect pool a little bit more. Wow, we had a nice one nothing win earlier, but we are losing a lot of games this month, unfortunately. 15-36 and 36 now, it's not looking as good. Let's go to the end of the series with Tulsa. Uh, we did get another win, and that was an 8 nothing win. I feel like Iowa Murr is literally pitching all of those good games. I'm curious on that. He was on that one nothing win, and Stan Nguyen was in the 8 nothing win. Okay, that's really nice to see. Good little shutout wins. Let's go to the end of this series with, what team is that, Corpus Christi? Yep, Corpus Christi. I was thinking that was Corpus Christi. Good old Corpus Christi, Texas. <laughs> okay, there was another 3 nothing win, and we have to call it people for the 40-man thing, or the... Uh, Okay, so let's do that because obviously I don't want them to auto call up like Tom Koo. Holy crap, man. I wear Murr's killing it still right now. But uh, let me go down to our 40 man roster and we will call up. We'll call up Molina because he's in AAA, I guess. We'll move him to the MLB. And Steven on as well. So we'll go to the MLB. And I will have us at 28 out of 28. And we'll see if we have to sign any other players to fill out uh, AAA's roster or not. No, we don't. Auto utilizing that. Our team's winning a couple games this month, so really good performance uh, from our triple, our double A team here in this last little week. As we just had a really good series with Corpus Christi, we won five of the six games. Shout out to our team. And now we have Amarillo, so that's another place I think in Texas, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go through these games as well to end the season. A little bit of a tougher team, it seems like we do take two of the six games. Okay, so 24 and 45 for double A. Let's take a look at how good our AA players did this season. And then obviously we will focus on the MLB the rest of the way. But I am curious on how good of our players did. So let's start up with actually the lineup because the pitchers are going to be the most intriguing. So starting off with Robert Yabu, who actually was on a heater a little bit near the end of the season. He batted four home runs in two, uh, 20 RBIs at 256 average. That's not terrible for a deep potential guy. He is growing in a lot of areas. 663 OPS and his war was not terribly bad it was a negative 0.2 so not too bad from yabu i would definitely say that's better than his d potential warrants so maybe he gets a slight boost but maybe not by much uh russell yang on the other hand wasn't very good i would say five home runs 27 rbis is okay but a 226 average he definitely needs to get that uh, vision and discipline higher than that at least he has good potential right now but he did worse than a d potential guy in my opinion his war was also worse. So yeah, Russell Yang definitely struggled a little bit. But that's okay because he is a lower overall by a little bit too. Now the question is how good did Tom Lee finish? Did he finish above 300? No, he did not. So he fell off a little bit near the end of the season. 17 home runs though still in his first season in double A. 62 RBIs, a 290 average. Fantastic stuff from Tom Lee. His power is dropping off a lot. I think it's because he's deep potential. So we got to give him that potential boost as fast as possible or else his power game might completely disappear. Now his contact game is getting better though. So that's a nice thing. Uh, let's take a look at his stat line note here. So he had an 831 OPS. Pretty damn good and a 1.4 war. I like it. But also like 17 stolen bases is nice. Uh, walked 47 times. Nice. Good stuff. He also had 25 doubles, 6 triples. So he does have a little bit of speed to his game it seems like. Charles Nomo batted a 257, 9 home runs, 50 RBIs. Pretty solid. 
He is also dropping off a little bit in his power game, which is kind of weird, but his contact is getting better. Um, but yeah, he also had one triple and 17 doubles, a 667 OPS, and a point, negative point six war. So he was a little bit struggling, but him and Yabu, I would say, were okay. Tom Lee was fantastic. Yang is definitely still the worst of the bunch. Brian Chu, 11 home runs, 55 RBI is pretty solid, but a 228 average, probably because he doesn't have the discipline. Yep. Likely because of that. His power is also dropping off. I don't know why all these guys' power is dropping off. It's kind of weird. Uh, but his outfielding play or his defensive play is getting better too, which is great. He's going to be a really good shortstop in terms of defensive play. Because you look at that fielding, it's a 59 already, but his arm, his accuracy, and his reaction, all pretty solid. So liking his defensive effort. Um, from an offensive standpoint, it's a kind of average. But obviously, he's not really an offensive player. And he had a positive war too, so... Brian Chu had an okay season, I would say. Raymond Park at DH, 18 home runs and 56 RBIs. Not too bad at 239 average, a little bit low, obviously. He is a deep potential prospect, though, so I think that's pretty solid for a deep potential prospect. He's also getting a lot of growth in a lot of areas. And let's see his other stat lines here. No triples, but 13 doubles. And he had a negative 1.8 war, probably because of his vision and discipline, though. Like, he probably swings at a lot of things. That's why his average is so low. But he did pick up 18 home runs, which is nice. So, not terrible from Park, but not great either. Yamazaki, apparently on a heater lately. He batted a 232 with 8 home runs and 28 RBIs. Not bad. He is also dropping in some areas, but also growing in a lot of areas as well. Uh, one triple, 22 doubles. Not bad. Seems like some of our guys are a little bit speedy. Okay. And 1.3 war, so a lot of these guys actually had some positive war, which is a really good sign at least, so I am happy about that. I know a lot of these guys also have generated quirks, uh, but I haven't shown you guys yet, so maybe I'll show you guys that in a second too. Uh, William Yokoyama, a 264 average, that's pretty good. Not a lot of home runs, obviously, but 26 RBIs in that 264 average, so he's getting on base. It's pretty nice. Really good doubles, triples, not so much triples, obviously, but triples are hard to get. So it makes sense. Yeah, he was okay. But a negative 1.2 war. So a little bit lower end than some of the other guys. And then Vogel is not ours. So let me show you guys the guys that have generated some quirks here. If I can. So Yabu has no quirks at the moment. But Russell Yang has home body. So that's pretty interesting. So he plays better at home. Tom Lee has nothing. Charles Nomo is actually better on the road. So a couple of guys that are good at home. A couple of guys good on the road. We have Brian Chu who's a fighter better in the ninth inning or later which is pretty awesome so maybe he could be the type of guy to hit some walk-offs um we have yamazaki who's got home body as well and dead red so he's excels at hitting fastballs so yamazaki's generating some growth in that area as well so there's our batters let's take a look at our pitchers in double a now see what they did oh my goodness parker iwamur is insane he's gonna be an eight potential prospect no problem wow I don't know why he's simulating so good, but 9-9 nine in nine with a 2.16 ERA and a .98 whip. Fantastic stats for Maiwa Murrah, and he's getting good growth too. He's going to be a really good pitcher in the major league level. Yeah, I'm excited for that. What's Oh, 22 quality starts out of 28 games, so he literally only had 6 games where he was not very good, and that's very impressive. And a 5.4 war. That's amazing. He doesn't even have a cork yet, but still, he's fantastic. And he's definitely showing that he was one of the better prospects that we drafted early in his franchise mode. Uh, Walter Jung, or Jung, 6-15, a 4.67 ERA and a 1.3 whip. Not fantastic, but obviously comparing him to Iwamura is something that we probably shouldn't do because Iwamura is killing it every game. Uh, Young played 28 games, and how much quality starts? 11? That's not terrible. Almost half of his games were good. But obviously the yard away and whip are a little bit high. Did have a positive war, so at least that's good. But obviously he didn't do as well as Iwamura. Uh, Stan Nguyen, I would say did better than Young in a sense. 3.63 ERA and a 1.26 whip. He went 6-16. Six and 16. Obviously not going to have a winning ratio on this team, but still not too bad. Up to a 62. 28 games started and 13 quality starts. So yes, yeah, Stan Nguyen was better than Jung was or Young. So that's not bad in 2.2 war. He does have stopper as his quirk. Did Young have a quirk? No. Okay. 
And then we head to our relievers. So Walter Cho, and eh, not great. <laughs> not really expected him to do good anyways, considering he's a deep potential guy. He's already 23, but eh, yeah, not the best stats for him. 1.9 war, at least it was positive. And then Tom Koo as a closer. Really solid numbers. He was 1-6, obviously on a bad team. Uh, but a 2.68 ERA is pretty good. A 1.2 whip. Yeah, that's not too bad for uh, Mr. Tom Koo. He's probably one of the guys that might be in AAA next season. So, I will take that. So, there is our pitching prospects as well. Let's focus now on the MLB and get the rest of the season simulated. And it uh, looks like we're going to go winless again this season. And obviously, we have to get through an entire offseason again, which is going to take a while. And then after this episode, I'm still going to have to lower a bunch of prospects permitted if we have any retirements or not. Hopefully, we don't have any retirements considering we didn't lower potential this time around because that would be really nice. Uh, let's go auto on Tan, auto on Ramirez, auto on that, auto on that. And the Aviators lost all their games as well, so AAA lost all their games. Not a surprise, considering tri uh, AAA doesn't have any prospects yet. But next season, they might be able to win their first game. Uh, AA finishes 24 and 45. Not bad. And no, I do not want to stop there. Auto on that. And looks like we're going to lose every game. Yep, we go 0 and 162 again, so three straight years with not a single win for this team. I wonder how long it's going to take before we actually get our first win in franchise history uh obviously we don't really care about our career our player stats in the mlb but i do want to take a look at the updated top prospects at the end of the season here quickly so young is still at number one after the end of the season uh yamazaki has jumped all the way to 26 that's pretty impressive stay new in at 34 we have nomo and iwimer at 46 and 47 and what else we got here? Anybody else? Yokoyama at 74. And I think that's it, right? Yep, that is it. Okay. Let's uh, get to the offseason now and see who ends up winning the World Series. Obviously, like I said, I don't really care about our MLB player stats until we actually get our prospects into the lineup. So the St. Louis Cardinals have beat the KC Royals in the finals. So the Cardinals are your World Series champions for 2026. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, we need a third base coach, pitching coach, a manager. Wow, we literally lost a lot of our um, like staff members this offseason. Retired players. Oh, man, we're still losing these guys even with C potentials and stuff like that. So we are going to still have to fill out a roster quite a bit, it looks like, I think. Yep, we're going to still have to fill out a roster a lot this offseason. I thought all these guys would be able to last longer. But even just lowering their overall seems to make them all retire. So we might have lost most of our team again, which is not great. But it is what it is. So all those guys are retired. Clayton Kershaw is into the Hall of Fame. Not a surprise on that front. And let's go to review staff here. So we need a manager, a pitching coach, and a third base coach. All right. It doesn't really matter if they're good or not because we're not going to have any guys in the major league level yet. So we're just going to go down here until we see no negative or barely any negative. Let's just go with this Marcellius Ring guy because he's got a cool name. Um, and then we also need, what was it, third base and a pitching coach. Third base and a pitching coach. Let's just go down here again. Find a random person. Doesn't really matter who. Uh, let's just go with one of you. I don't really care if they're bad coaches for now. Ones, obviously, we need... Um, good coaches and stuff like that will definitely take this a little bit slower, but right now it doesn't matter at all. Let's just get these guys signed up. There you go. We should be able to get those guys to all sign. Let's send to free agency one. Okay, so Sharp is in as the pitching coach. Uh, yeah, well, let's stop simulating for a second. Let me take a look. Do we have any contracts to dish out still? Uh, player contracts and uh, contract renewable okay looks like nothing yet but yeah I think literally all the players we have left is literally our prospects okay so a few guys didn't actually retire so uh, reader strong in Hatfield but everybody else on the roster retired <laughs> 
but at least we're starting to build together a squad so at least it's not as bad but it is gonna it's kind of getting annoying where we have to keep re-signing players in the off season okay see here okay so we are gonna obviously offer Yu Chang a contract for next year because he was a rule five pickup he's still a stopgap player he'll be signed for two years just to give us a player signed up for two years because honestly we're not going to be competitive in those two years anyways i don't care if he's 31 i'll just give him what he's asking for nobody on our team's getting paid anyways so <laughs> uh but let's get the rest of these guys signed up so we'll get iowa Mura signed for a year we'll get young signed for a year mr chu i'm excited though for the upcoming draft again just to see if there's more good prospects again i hope eventually we find ourselves a generational asian talent player um yeah sure just take the money i don't really care is at this stage we don't really care what we're paying these players uh renew contracts yeah just take the money tom take the money thank you okay stan nguyen walter cho that's still gonna suck having to sign a bunch of players in the off season because there's gonna be so much players we're gonna have to sign <laughs> Oh, man. But at least we're starting to actually get, like, a lot of our players in all of our lineups. Eventually, we won't have to sign really much of anybody. Also, hopefully Vincent Cio is healthy for next year. It looks like he is. Hopefully, he doesn't end up retiring at any stage early on if he gets re-injured again. Because, obviously, his injury last year was a pretty big one. And I don't really want him to suffer any more of those injuries. Okay, Russell Yang... And then we also have these guys as well. We'll just sign up because those are just filler players. So we'll just sign up the filler players. And that is good. Okay, perfect. So all those guys are offered contracts, I think. Yep, perfect. Okay. And 40-man roster. Nobody's going to be lost, so that's good. We won't add anybody to our 40-man roster. Let's simulate to free agency two. Uh, Spencer Torkelson has been dealt to the Phillies from the Tigers for Aaron Nola. That's a pretty big trade, actually. Uh, we do get our third base coach. We're still waiting on the manager. Matt McLean getting dealt to the Cubs for Velasquez, Franco, and Clark. Okay. And Ring also accepts. Perfect. So we get all those. Let's just skip through the rest of these notifications because I don't really care where these guys are signing too much. But uh, no. And perfect. That's good. Ira Murra is still thinking about his contract, which I don't know why he's still thinking about it, but he will accept, I know for sure, because he's got full interest. There's no way he's going to want to leave this team anyways. Not this early on. I don't think he could even test free agency yet anyways. Let's see. Can I get here? Okay, he accepted. Perfect. Good. Because Ira Murra is definitely our top prospect, I'd say, at the moment. Um, Let's simulate to the next free agency portion skip through this at least we get through off seasons a little bit quicker because we don't have to actually like re-sign all of our actual good players yet eventually at some point we're gonna have to be giving like big contracts out and that's not gonna be fun okay so rule five should be coming up somewhat soon also the draft lottery that's another important thing obviously for our team is where we're gonna be drafting going into next season so let's sim to rule five we got to draft lottery now are we going to be able to win a draft lottery? Obviously, we are tied for the best odds again. We have never picked at number one so far. We've always been picking around number three. Is this finally the year that the Tropic Turtles win the draft lottery? I don't know if I want to win a draft lottery. It depends if there's a generational Asian player or not. Because if there's not a generational Asian player, we're going to be taking somebody that's maybe not worth the first overall pick at first overall. So let's uh, see where we're drafting for the upcoming season. See if it's going to be number one or if we're going to fall back or not come on boys let's see please first overall let's see no we fall the fifth wow so the giants move from number five to number one and we fall back to number five that's bullshit man we didn't win a single game yet the giants won 70 games yet they're up to number one in the draft again they had a 10 percent chance i wish we would have better odds just because we didn't win a single game but here we are oh well at least it shouldn't be a generational Asian draft. If it's a generational Asian draft, I would be kind of pissed off at this game that it would just give me the fifth overall pick, but it is what it is. So there is that. Now the rule of five is next, so we'll get to that and see if there's any Asian players we could take like last year, because last year we got two players for our roster. 
who knows maybe there'll be some more for this year so let's see what we got here let's actually just go through all players i guess actually no it's not sorted by alphabet our overall rating which is kind of annoying let's just go through each position here and see if there's anybody we could take to give us a bit more depth while we wait for prospects to get ready these lists are always so long so it might take us a while to actually see if there's anybody or not a lot of prospects on these lists are well not prospects some of them well i guess they're all prospects technically but a lot of trash players but i'm hoping that there's still like maybe some asians that we could take just to fill out a roster a little bit more and then we don't have to sign as much in the free agency portion so far not seen a single asian not great uh relief pitcher wise at some stage eventually the draft class prospects will be in here too like you'll see uh guys that we weren't able to draft probably in here which is good but in these earlier stages obviously it's kind of tough to find players at least that's the way it seems like so far because the first few years we've barely been able to find any man i hate how the screen lags a bit here uh let's see nick star what a name uh there's got to be maybe an asian here somewhere right you would think yeah this list is way too damn long man <laughs> it actually kind of hurts my brain just like trying to like read it quickly all these last names and see if there's an asian last name um anybody else here no not so far still not seeing anybody and yeah, it looks like there's going to be like no pitchers to take here unless there's some closers but i doubt it that's something we still need is closing pitching so hopefully this upcoming draft has some good asian closers uh catcher wise do we get anybody no it doesn't look like it either man there's gonna be like no prospects to take i don't think in this draft this guy's a white guy from illinois let's see hmm I am legit not seeing anything again in this draft class, or not draft class, I guess. Well, it is technically a draft class, but it's not the draft class. Uh, this always makes it a little bit tougher when we can't find anything in these uh, Rule Fives, but it is what it is. At least last year we were able to find two players, but so far it doesn't seem like there's a single Asian in this Rule Five. <laughs> uh, that's definitely not an Asian. Shortstop wise. Hmm. Yeah, this is not great. It is what it is, though. At least we're starting to build together a good prospect pool with, like, outfielders and all that stuff. So those guys will just get more playing time in double and triple. Yeah, I'm not seeing a single guy here. Center field-wise. Come on, just give me one at least. At least one. Uh, Marcus Lee Sang? I don't know if that's an Asian last name or not. I feel like Sang is, but his name is Marcus Lee. Hmm. I gotta look up that guy because he's probably real if he's still if he's actually in this. I gotta look him up and see if he's actually got any Asian descent. Marcus Lee Sang. Let's see. Yeah, he's definitely a real player. Does he have a Wikipedia page that says if he's Asian descent? Doesn't look like it. Um. Yeah. Born in Maryland. Based on his picture, I don't know what ethnicity he is, to be honest, though. Huh. I'm trying to see if I could find anything about him or not. Yeah, I don't know if he is Asian or not. It's tough to tell. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to take him just based on the fact that I don't know if he's Asian or not. But uh, he would definitely have been a candidate if he actually was. Shane Sasaki has an Asian last name as well. I th He's from Hawaii. Is Shane Sasaki Asian then? I think there is Asians in Hawaii, but let me look up Shane Sasaki and see if he's a real player too. Shane Sasaki. Let me look up and see if he actually has like a picture or any, a picture of himself. It looks like he's maybe Asian. Shane Sasaki. Yeah, he, he looks like he's Asian, so I'll take Shane Sasaki. I will take Shane Sasaki. Gives us another center fielder behind uh, Walter Choi or above Walter Choi for the time being. There we go. We found somebody. I thought that was an Asian last name, and I had to just double check that he actually looked like an Asian guy and not some random white guy. Let me just double check on the rest of this, though, and see if there's any more players we could take here. 
Uh, right field is the last area we need to look in, and we'll get into the next parts of this offseason after that. Well, at least we found one player. Yep, well, only one player, so we are going to skip the rest of this, and that's good. Perfect. So at least we got one player. Uh, we didn't get as much as last year, but eventually I think there'll be stages where we're able to get a lot more than just one or two players. Okay, arbitration hearings. Obviously, we don't have any of those, so that's not going to matter too much. But we are going to still have to fill out a roster here shortly. I'll probably have to make a jump cut again just because they're also will take too long. If we go to free agency now, we are not still not lower stage yet, but we will be in the next portion of this, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, not yet. Soon, though. Once we get the spring training, I think it is. So let's go to spring training. Uh, yeah, let's stop simulating for a second here. Not yet, actually. Oh, it's right when we actually get to the spring training. There we go. So now I should be able to sign up a bunch of players, right? Yep, okay, now we're at the stage. So I'm going to make a quick jump cut. It's going to take me a while myself, but I'm going to make a jump cut, and we are going to have a full roster signed up. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, guys, so I finally got it set up. It took a while <laughs> again, uh, but uh, we got everybody in the right positions. So basically, if we go here to AAA, I decided to promote uh, Parker Iwermer to AAA. I think he's worth, obviously, considering he's been playing great in AA. Uh, also, Tom Koo is going to be moving from AA to AAA. I could actually move Kevin Sato back down to double. Yeah, that's probably what I should do as well, quickly. But all these other guys are players that we didn't draft, so there's not a lot of guys that are getting promoted, but a good chunk of them uh yeah let's move sato down to double a here quickly and we'll put casilla not casilla let's put uh this peter iwamer guy i didn't draft him but he does have the same last name obviously as parker he's going to get uh, moved up to triple in replacement there we go so that is all nice and set up so we'll have all of our top prospects still mostly in double a and stuff for a few guys who are going to get a chance to play in triple a uh, Tom Koo also has used his last minor league option, so it's just to, just to let you guys know on that front that we will have to probably get him in the major leagues probably starting next season just because of the fact that we accidentally had him on our 40-man roster a few years ago, and soon enough he will actually have to play on our roster or else he'll have to pass through waivers, I think. So there is that, and I think we're ready to sim through spring training, and then we'll probably simulate uh, the week of the uh, beginning of the season again and then we'll take a look at the upcoming draft class. And obviously between episodes, I'll lower everybody that uh, we did not draft on this team. So uh, let's uh, get to the regular season. And we should have enough players on our roster, right? Not enough in AAA, apparently. Not enough in AAA at the moment, which means I might have to sign a few more players for AAA. But I don't know what we need still down there. Let me see what we got here. Well, I know we have enough pitchers, I'm pretty sure. We already have two of those. We need a first baseman in triple A. Okay, so we need a first baseman in triple A. I can actually move this guy to triple A, probably. Yeah, I'll move that guy to triple A, and that actually makes us have enough players, I think, now. Just going to make sure we have, like, a couple in each position. Oh, Brian Shu got promoted back to triple A again. I didn't want him in triple A, but the AI put him in triple A. Hmm. I don't know if I want that. Is Brian Chu's hitting is it's okay, but I still think he needs some work. Who would I send down though if I did that? I could move Bauer to Triple A, but that wouldn't have enough in the major leagues. Yeah, we'll keep it like this, I guess. It's not the end of the world if he's playing there. Yeah, we'll keep the rest of this the same, and we should have enough players. So let's uh, get through this first week also of the regular season, obviously. And so that way we could take a look at what this draft class looks like. And hopefully there's no generational Asian concern. We're drafting fifth overall this year. Uh, it's our latest pick we've had yet up to this point in time. So let's get through the opening few games of the season. I know we might end up winning some games potentially. Who knows? I don't think we will any, win any games yet. But there's a chance that we might win our first game in franchise history. Because that we do not have that minimum number of position players on AAA. Okay. Well, let me get to the go to the free agent signing area again, uh, which is here. Perfect. Uh, what do we need for AAA players then? Um, hmm. I don't really care which position. I'm just going to sign random low overall guys and hope that they work out. 
So we'll go with you and triple A. Oh my goodness, stop with the longer security people. Thank you, Stutter, and we'll sign up Winkler too. I don't really care if we need third baseman or not. And we'll also sign this Bronson guy. And all those guys will go to triple A. So if we go to third base here quickly, we have a lot of third basemen, but all of them are gonna be uh, Stutter and Winkler are going to be added to triple. That's good. So we should have enough players now. We should. To be able to get through this. Because I want to just take a look at the draft class. Let's, uh... Oh yeah, we got to make sure our lineups are set up too. Goddamn, man. There's so much stuff to do when setting up this team. It's actually kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um, let's just make sure the right guys are in the right positions. So... Yamazaki definitely can't be a right fielder. Nomo will be changed over to third base. Yabu is, what is he also, a second baseman, so he'll change over to, nah, he won't take the second base spot. He'll probably be on the bench, to be honest, out of the bunch. Got to make sure that we have all our prospects in the right areas. So we will put Siu into right field. Yamazaki has no other position other than catcher. So he'll come in instead there. Yabu goes to the bench. Tom Lee would be the number one left fielder there, so I guess we will move Chung in as a center fielder or right fielder. Center fielder makes sense. We do need a shortstop into the lineup, which means none of these guys play shortstop, which means we'll have to put in... Oh, I know it, Taguchi. Taguchi does. Perfect. Okay, there we go. Now we got everybody that plays their normal positions in... Sato would be on the bench, which is kind of okay to start off with. Sasaki definitely shouldn't be on the bench. He should be in over top of Vincent Sio instead. So Sio, unfortunately, would have to start on the bench as well, but that's okay. Uh, Walter Choi at center fielder. I would rather have Chung out there due to potential. Lee out there as well. Yeah, that's fine. Let's double check the rest of this as well. I know it's a lot of stuff that we have to do on this episode, but it is what it is. Uh, so we need a center fielder again, which means, once again, that Mr. Chung will go into here. And then we need a shortstop again, which means, once again, we will go to Mr. Mark Taguchi. And once again, we will also readjust this part, so we'll change Yamazaki to... Yamazaki can only play catcher, right? He said, yeah. And then Nomo will change over to third base. Yabu will be taken out of the lineup for David Sasaki. Perfect, okay. And then Russell Yang could stay in the lineup there. Perfect, okay. That is all good and ready to go. Perfect, and I don't really need to worry about Triple A. I don't think too much, but I should double check it just because I think there's a few prospects that we put in there. Yeah, Brian Chu should be the shortstop there instead of Nieves. Um, and that's all good. These other guys don't really matter too much. You could dig you. I don't really care if you're in the wrong position. And then also here. Now we'll take this guy up for Chu as well. Almost got through this part. <laughs> and now we got to make sure our pitching rotations are good as well. So Tom Koo definitely is not a starter. I don't know why the heck they're trying to put him in as a starter in AAA. But he's going to be used as a closer, or do we want to use him as a reliever? Let's use him as a, a long, actually not a long reliever, a mid reliever, I think. Or let's, wait, not long reliever, let's swap the two of you around, that's good. Okay, so Iwamura is a starter, these other guys don't matter because none of them are a prospect. So Tom Koo is a reliever, Iwamura is a starter, that's all good and ready to go. actually needed to take a look at double as well. Double wise, we need to make sure all these guys are in. So Young, Nguyen, uh, we got Yamamoto as a setup, which I don't want. I want him as an actual reliever. Uh, Walter Cho is the closing pitcher. I guess that could work. I don't mind it, considering he's kind of a guy that might not develop anyways. Let's just go with that. And we'll take a random reliever here and make him a starter. Perfect. So there is that all set up and ready to go. Let's uh, get to finding out what this draft class is like. Uh, it took a lot of management to do that, but it is what it is. 
hopefully we don't win our first game in franchise history as we already had an injury in the minor leagues i think or is that some major leaguer i think it's a major leaguer but that sucks oh man do we need more players in our lineup again uh we could use maybe more players i don't know where though let's just sign ourselves in a couple more free agents just to be sure with the roster space oh man I'm sorry about this, guys. This part's probably boring as shit, but <laughs> that's part of these episodes. At least the draft is not too far from now because the draft is going to be probably another exciting thing. So we'll sign a couple of those guys up, and we will take those center fielders we just signed, and we'll just add them to the MLB, I think. Or add one of them to the MLB at least. Yeah, perfect. Okay, that should be good. It should be good. Um, yeah, let's just go auto fix lineups on that. Because the major leagues don't matter too much. Okay, now we could actually take a look at the draft class finally. Okay, so the question is what is the draft class looking like in this year? Are we going to be able to find some good Asian talent? And who should we set our sights on? Let me just make sure we actually have our staff still signed up here. Looks like we did lose a scout, so we will have to replace Coronado. Yeah, so we need we have somebody that's good at pitchers and positional players and discovery. Holcomb is good at positional players and efficiency. Okay, so we kind of need just like another one that's good maybe with um, pitchers, I guess, in a sense. So who do we want to bring in here? Just look for somebody that's maybe a really good scout that we have the money for. Most we could go up to is over 100k, it looks like. So, Ooh, this one has like really good positional players, discovery, pitchers, and efficiency. So, you know what? We're going to bring in this Cats person for Coronado. Yeah. Oh, I can't afford it. Uh, what about Philippe Cherry? Good at pitchers, efficiency, and positional players is decent as well. You know what? Let's do it that one. Perfect. So, there we go. We readjusted our scouts a little bit. Let's take a look at this draft class, or some of the draft class at least. Okay, so let's start off with, ooh, okay, okay. There might be a good starting pitcher that we have a chance to draft. So, there is Kaz Kazuhito Hayashi, who might be a 99 potential guy. Mm. Well, that's a very intriguing one right out of the gate. So that's definitely somebody we definitely need to scout out and find out if he's a generational Asian talent. Because that would be a very nice starting pitcher to add to our bullpen, obviously. Or not bullpen, even. <laughs> uh, so there's one guy. Is there any other ones that we get scout out? Let's see. Oh, David Na is back in the draft. I remember him from a few years ago. Hmm. That's cool. So we do have another former guy that uh, I did remember from a few years ago in the draft that disappeared. Came back two years later, looks like. So two starting pitchers so far we could scout out. Hey, look, it's Obama. That's funny. <laughs> uh, so two people. Any other starting pitchers? Yeah, this might be a draft that helps us out a lot if those guys are actually that good. This episode's probably going to end up being really long. I don't know how long I had to make that cut for when I was looking through all those players and signing players again. Uh, Philip Park, another starting pitcher that's not rated to get drafted, but... Still a guy worth scouting out, I would say. So there is three starting pitchers. Anybody else so far? Obviously, we could discover more of them eventually, too. But I think Kazuhito Hayashi could end up being really good. So I'm definitely intrigued to see if he's actually that good. We head to relief pitchers. Any relievers? Like I said, I hope that there's a closer, at least, in this draft that we could draft to. Because we do need them. Uh, Ken Chan. Back in the draft again. I think I remember him from last year. He looks actually not that bad as a reliever, maybe. He is 10% scouted already, too. Uh, Leonard Sacto. I think a couple of these guys were in last year's draft or two years ago's draft. I can't honestly remember, but uh, it's good to see a couple of these guys back and potentially guys we could take. So it's always nice when they return into the draft. How do you pronounce that last name? Inch Brinston? I don't even know. Uh, Brent Bennett, what a name. Uh, let's see. Oh, Charles E. Moss is back as well. Okay. Hopefully a lot of these guys actually stay in the draft class and don't disappear. 
But like you guys said, I think it's after the 200s that they disappear. So Hiro Yuki Yamada. So there's a different Yamada. Hiro Yuki. Okay. So we got actually some guys born in Japan too, which is nice. Because we're going for all Asians, but Japanese ones especially would be intriguing just based on our team being in Japan. Uh, let's see. Anybody else? Oh, Eric Yamashita. I think I remember him. Or maybe not. Because he's only 18, so maybe it was a different Yamashita we saw a few years ago. But still, seems like a good pool of relievers. Hopefully there's some good batters too, because that's always nice. So there is the relief pitchers. Closing pitcher-wise, what do we got? Philip Chung? Okay, Philip Chung would be a good one. Yeah, Philip Chung is definitely somebody I would want to skid out, just because he could be a high-potential guy. And we do need a closer, so Philip Chung is up there for sure to scout out, I would say. Kevin Choi is back in the draft class again, but he's kind of a mixed bag. Probably doesn't get drafted, in my opinion. Or he might get drafted, but pretty late. Uh, Jason E. Rabu is back as well. Okay, definitely not looking as good as we were thinking last year, but he could still have a decent overall. And that's closers. Catcher-wise, we don't really need catchers because we do have a couple already, but always nice to get more depth in a sense. Um, anybody? No catchers so far? What about first baseman? Give me somebody that I will be completely shocked on. <laughs> uh, does not seem like it so far. So it looks like it might be more of a pitching heavy draft for us here early on. Obviously, we could still discover more players. Uh, there's Michael Fong again re-entering the draft for the third consecutive season, I think. Eh, he's not still looking the best. He might still have an okay starting overall, but his potential is going to be pretty low. Uh, so falling back in a draft class. Intriguing. Uh, third baseman-wise, we got anybody here. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, of course, I knew there had to be a guy named this eventually. Lee Lee from South Korea. Oh, my goodness. Well, third baseman, 23 years old. He's probably not that good. He's probably a D potential guy, but still, that name, it would be funny to draft him just because of the name. For the memes. Uh, Shortstop-wise, we do have a couple shortstop prospects, but always fun to look through shortstops as well. Let's see if there's anybody out here. And no. Left fielding-wise, this is usually where we find good prospects. Always is in the outfield. Ken Yamaguchi. Might be really good. Left fielder might be a high overall, but he also could end up being like Sasaki too. You never know. He's from Illinois. Hmm. Projected first round talent, maybe. Uh, any other outfielders? Daniel Ryu. Interesting. Kind of a mixed bag of a player as well. We have a lot of outfielding prospects, so outfielding is kind of like a last resort type of thing. But if we have to take a player from the outfield, we will. Especially if they have secondary positions and stuff. Uh, center fielding wise, there is Lee Cho. Also could be somewhat decent. We do could we could use more center fielders. We don't have a lot of those. We do have like left fielders and right fielders though. So if we want a center fielder, Lee Cho is there. Darren Hoffman is back in draft class. Which you guys were telling me to scout him out last year. Almost forgot about Hoffman. Uh, Ken Fong, a different Fong at center field too. So it seems like there's a good uh, chunk of Asian center fielders here so far, which is good. Uh, but obviously it's not a top priority for us to get. So right fielding wise, anybody at right field? Uh, does not seem like it so far. Just got to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Nope. Okay. So I think, obviously, the most intriguing player for us to scout out this year is none other than Kazuhito Yahashi. Ayashi. I think he could potentially be a generational guy, but I don't know for sure. Obviously, we need to scout him out fully, but he could end up being a good starting pitcher prospect, or maybe he's not actually even close to being that good. But still, if we want to draft more pitchers, there is that. And final thing we got to do to end this episode is take a look, take a look at the top prospects list for this season. So the top prospect still in baseball is Walter Jung. Obviously, I'm going to be making my potential adjustments that Nick recommends me in between episodes as well. So who knows how good uh, Jung's potential is going to be. 
uh, going into next episode. Um, what else we got here? Wow, Seattle's got a lot of prospects on this top 100 list. Wow, our next closest is number 44 with Yamazaki. And we have Stan Nguyen at 52. Nomo in Iowa Mur at 68 and 69. I don't know why Iowa Mur is at 69. I feel like that's kind of bad. Yamamoto at 76. That's interesting. That's where he debuts. And we also have Mark Taguchi making the debut at number 99. And of course, a guy we could have drafted in William Shin at number 100. Interesting. So there is that. And once again, I'll show you guys the updated depth chart here if we go a couple years into the future. You can see Iowa Mur and Jung should be pretty good by that point. Same with Stan Nguyen. So. Pitching is not that bad, but obviously some of the other areas need a lot of work in. So obviously going to be interesting to see if our team develops those in that area and see if our team actually has a good looking roster in those few years. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Tokyo Tropic Turtles Draft and Franchise Mode. So in next episode, we will simulate up to the draft. So we'll do some good scouting and see if there's any good prospects in this upcoming draft class. And hopefully we find some more good talents again to just keep building up the depth in this roster. And eventually we should be able to start winning our first few games in franchise history. So anything down below, and I'll see you guys next time.